Have you ever wondered if our reality is a simulation? This video will delve into potential evidence that we live in a simulation. The simulation hypothesis suggests that our entire universe and the experiences within it might merely be a vast computer simulation. Nick Bostrom, a philosopher at the University of Oxford, has been instrumental in pushing this hypothesis into the mainstream. Bostrom presents three possibilities concerning the simulation hypothesis. First possibility, all technologically mature civilizations become extinct before they can create a hyper-realistic simulation of reality. Second possibility, if any civilization does reach an adequate level of technological maturity, they might not be interested in running hyper-realistic simulations. And the third possibility, we are almost certainly living in a simulation. Billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk once said, there's a billion to one chance we're living in base reality. And astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson once remarked that the likelihood may be very high that we're in a simulation. The progression of technology, especially in the realms of virtual reality and artificial intelligence, adds credence to these discussions. If we, as a relatively young civilization in the vast timeline of the universe, are already creating relatively simple simulations, what could a super-advanced civilization millions of years ahead of us accomplish? This video will explore potential mathematical evidence that we live in a simulation, who created the simulation, whether our afterlife is a simulation, whether parallel universes are simulations, and more. Number two, can mathematical patterns in nature prove we live in a simulation? The idea that our universe might be a simulation isn't solely a philosophical or sci-fi speculation. There are mathematical elements that hint at the possibility of a programmed reality. These mathematical constructs, which are deeply interwoven into the very fabric of our universe, can be seen in nature, landscapes, and cosmic phenomena. In nature, patterns like the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio frequently emerge. The Fibonacci sequence, where each number is the sum of the two preceding ones, can be found in the branching of trees, the arrangement of leaves, and the spirals of galaxies. The golden ratio, a mathematical constant, appears in art, architecture, and even the proportions of natural organisms. Both the golden ratio and the Fibonacci sequence have fractal properties. Their omnipresence across various facets of our reality suggests a repeating pattern potentially pointing towards a programmed algorithm within a simulation. At the forefront of these musings is digital physics, a groundbreaking theory suggesting that the universe is fundamentally describable by information. This implies that every aspect of the universe, no matter how complex, is computable and can theoretically be simulated down to the most minute detail. If the entire universe can be reduced to bits of information, then it's not a stretch to postulate that we might be existing within a vast computational matrix. Number three, is quantum physics the source code of a simulated universe? As we delve deeper into the subatomic realm, the behavior of particles and waves introduces challenges to our classical understanding of reality, prompting some to question if these phenomena serve as indications of a simulated universe. The double slit experiment provides one of the most baffling insights into quantum behavior. When particles like electrons are shot one by one toward a barrier with two slits, they form an interference pattern on a screen as if they traveled as waves. Yet, when observed directly, these particles seem to behave as individual entities. This suggests that the very act of observation alters their nature. Such behavior is counterintuitive, making it feel more at home in a computational setting than a classical physical one. Could it be that our observations cause a sort of rendering or calculation in the simulation, thus altering the outcome? Likewise, the fact that particles appear to exist in multiple quantum states simultaneously until observed might suggest that these quantum states are data processing or storage techniques of a simulation. Perhaps the universe decides on a specific state when necessary, similar to a computer's optimization process. Potentially, one of the most tantalizing pieces of evidence comes from the discovery of error-correcting codes in the equations of fundamental physics. Prominent physicists 
like Dr. James Gates, have unearthed patterns in these equations that bear an uncanny resemblance to codes used in computer software to rectify errors. If our universe's very fabric contains structures that look like computational designs, it might hint at an architecture that was deliberately designed. Number four, who or what created the simulation? One intriguing possibility is that our future selves might have developed the technology and capability to simulate entire universes, allowing them to study or relive history. These simulations might serve as cautionary tales or tools of introspection, examining the paths taken and the ramifications of our actions. Since aspects of our universe's design might hint at a creator, many wonder if there is a God possessing absolute control over our reality. This entity could have the power to modify, steer, or terminate our reality. If our reality is a simulation, then perhaps this godlike figure is an advanced being from outside the simulation. If we accept the idea of an external architect, it opens another perplexing question. Is this god a singular entity or part of a larger species? It's conceivable that our reality's designers could be a collective, a species beyond the simulation. This species might have multiple members, each with the ability to create, study, or interact with countless simulations, akin to how we humans engage with virtual games or programs. The phenomenon of UFOs brings a fascinating twist to this narrative. If these unidentified craft are not products of our known world, they might be controlled by beings from outside the simulation. This might explain their apparent ability to defy our laws of physics. They may be here to ensure that the simulation's progression aligns with their objectives. If we had the capability to simulate worlds, it's conceivable that we would employ similar observational methods. Number five, is the afterlife another simulation? The quest to understand the nature of the afterlife has fascinated human civilizations for millennia. Tales of euphoric heavens and nightmarish hells are deeply embedded in our religions and narratives. But as we transition into an era defined by digitalization and virtual realities, a new question emerges. Could our afterlives be simulations? And could they be meticulously designed and controlled by a higher power or a highly advanced civilization? Imagine a digital heaven designed as a reward for individuals who have lived in alignment with the values and desires of our simulation's creators. Here, every moment is saturated with happiness, love, and harmony. Every landscape, every melody, and every interaction in this simulated paradise is perfectly curated to bring about continuous euphoria, making it a realm of eternal reward. Conversely, there could be a counterpart where no one would want to go to, a digital hell. Instead of reward, it would be a realm of retribution designed to dish out punishments to those who acted contrary to the ideals or expectations of our simulation's creator. Tormented souls might find themselves trapped in an unending loop of their worst memories, forever reliving their darkest hours. The environment could be meticulously tailored to induce despair, pain, or intense negative emotions. But of course, these are just speculations on top of other speculations. Number six, are parallel universes other simulations? In some interpretations of quantum mechanics, such as the many worlds interpretation, parallel universes may form every time a subatomic particle goes through any interaction. Each of these realities could be running parallel to ours, each a product of different variables, scenarios, and purposes. If our universe is a simulation, wouldn't that mean that parallel realities could be simulations as well? Imagine a digital laboratory where countless simulations are executed simultaneously. Higher beings or civilizations might operate a multitude of universes, each diverging due to minor tweaks or massive overhauls in their initial conditions. Some universes might resemble our own, while others could be wildly different, governed by unique laws of physics or inhabited by entirely distinct forms of life. Diving deeper, we can envision these realities as data points on a statistical bell curve. Most of the simulations could cluster around certain core events or conditions, considered norms of the multiverse. However, at the fringes of this curve might lie realities that are exceptionally rare or extreme. A pertinent question then arises, is there a central simulation, one that lies at the heart of this bell curve, chosen or designed for a purpose beyond our comprehension? 
Could we, perhaps, be living in that central reality? Or are we merely one of the countless data points closer to the edges? The concept of parallel ancestor simulations adds another dimension to this idea. If advanced civilizations aim to understand or relive their past, they might run simulations rooted in different eras of their history. This would imply the existence of simulated realities based in the medieval ages, the Renaissance, the distant future, and so on. If this is the case, then our understanding of time itself could be upended. Rather than a linear progression, time might be an intricate web with various realities branching out from different nodes. Such a perspective transforms our understanding of time from a river flowing in one direction to a vast ocean with waves moving in countless directions. It would be as if every moment in history exists simultaneously in multiple parallel realities, making time as we know it a mere illusion. Number seven, do we have free will? What if our experience of free will is merely an illusion? As we go about our lives believing we are making decisions, could it be that these choices were never truly ours to make? Our cherished milestones, our pivotal life decisions, even our daily choices might merely be playing out according to a grand design. Such a notion makes one ponder on the intricate electrical signals firing within our brains. Are they genuinely spontaneous? Or are they designed to fire in a particular sequence, causing us to act and think in predetermined ways? In this predestined storyline, our strides in technological advancement, particularly towards creating advanced AI, could be anticipated and desired by the creators of our simulation. Why would a simulated universe desire its inhabitants to create intelligence surpassing their own? Perhaps the ultimate aim is not just for humans to create AI, but for this intelligence to take on a larger role in shaping the universe. Consider the goal of terraforming other planets or even galaxies. If the purpose of our existence in this simulation is to perpetuate intelligence and life, then AI, with its potential for immortality and adaptability, could be the torchbearer of this mission, exploring and adapting to environments far beyond human capability. Number eight, do our actions matter? This concept brings forth a fundamental dilemma. If our actions, our hurts, and our loves occur within the confines of a computer code, are they of any real consequence? Or are they just a series of zeros and ones? It can be argued that the actions and consequences in our reality do matter because they're real to us. Our joys, sorrows, victories, and defeats would be as impactful in a simulation as they would be outside of a simulation. Our emotions and experiences, regardless of their origin, are authentic to us. Whether we inhabit a base reality or a meticulously crafted simulation, the weight of our actions, the depth of our feelings, and the essence of our humanity remain undiminished. Number nine, will we ever create simulations the size of universes? If we ever gained the ability to create a simulation the size of a universe, or at least appeared to be the size of a universe, that could be a compelling indication that we live in a simulation. Technologically, the primary obstacle to simulating a universe in its entirety is computational power. Capturing every facet of a universe would demand an inconceivable amount of processing capability. Even if Moore's Law, the prediction that computer processing power doubles approximately every two years, were to continue indefinitely, there are practical limitations to how small we can make transistors and how much data we can store and process. Thus, any simulation of a universe might need to make compromises, which would involve approximating certain phenomena or leaving out microscopic details. Perhaps we don't need to create an entire universe. For example, there are some far-fetched speculations that the galaxies distant to ours are actually holograms. This would suggest that our universe is much smaller. However, this notion would go against our best scientific understanding of the universe and it could be no better than pre-Renaissance beliefs that the Earth is flat or that the Earth is the center of the universe. If we were to create a simulation that at least appeared to be the size of a universe, perhaps some of its inhabitants would be conscious beings. That would raise the possibility of these beings creating their own simulations inside their own simulation. That would suggest that there are countless simulations nesting within other simulations. Statistically speaking, given the potential vast number of simulations, it might be more probable that we're living inside one of these virtual realities rather than the base or true reality. 
Number 10. Can we escape the simulation? If our reality is indeed a digital construction, then in theory there might be ways to interact with or send signals to the entities beyond our perceived universe. Such an endeavor would require a deep understanding of the code or laws governing our universe. If patterns, anomalies, or glitches can be identified, they might provide clues or backdoors through which communication or interaction is possible. We'd essentially be looking for weaknesses or vulnerabilities in the system, much as hackers probe for flaws in computer software. If our universe operates like a vast computational system, black holes could represent a sort of system overload or data dump where information is compressed or removed. Venturing into a black hole, if even possible, might lead to unpredictable outcomes. Anything from instant death, the most likely outcome, to exiting the simulation. Wormholes, if they exist and can be stabilized, might allow for shortcuts through space-time. In a simulated universe, they could function as pathways or conduits between different parts of the simulation, or even different simulations altogether. It's an enticing idea, using wormholes as bridges to escape or explore other realms. However, the practical challenges, both in terms of understanding and accessing these wormholes, would be monumental. The question of whether we can escape a hypothetical simulation hinges on the nature and intent of the simulators themselves. If they wished for inhabitants to have a potential exit, clues or paths might be embedded within our reality. However, if their intent was to maintain a closed system for observation or any other purpose, breaking out might be impossible. Regardless, as we continue to push the boundaries of our understanding, we're bound to uncover more about the nature of our reality, simulated or not. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check the description below for a free PDF and watch this next video about extended reality.